Back in like November when we were having Anime Club, and that's how this whole thing was born. It was because we decided we love this stuff, we're excited about this stuff, we think it's so cool, and we want to talk about that. We want to tell people about it. We're excited and we want to share our passion. about you guys and this is really cool because I write for your age group so it's really cool for me to be able to hear what you guys love and why you love it so I'm not gonna talk about myself I'm gonna let you guys do the talking hi my name is Aaron Burrell and I'm a fan of the housing OVA collection I'm Dominique Smith and I'm a fan of Mega Man my name is Nigel Belts and I'm a fan of Kingdom Hearts my name is Scott Morales I'm a fan of all anime and I still think Zero is better than Mega Man my name is Kyrie, and I'm a fan of the Disguise series. My name is Brittany, and I'm a fan of anime and the gothic Lolita lifestyle. When did you first realize, this isn't just something I like, this is something I really like, this is something I'm really into. I was two years old, and I had insomnia, and like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z came on every day at 6 a.m., and I just had to be up to watch it, so <laughs> that's kind of when I realized it. <laughs> I realized I was a fan when I started watching Gundam and when I realized random violence and giant robots blowing everything up is hilarious. What is your favorite memory from the thing you're a fan of? I think my favorite moment was when I got the goth bible and then I convinced the library to start holding their own copies of it just because I wanted to spread the love around. I believe my favorite memory of a game that I beat was Streets of Rage 1. When I beat the final boss, and I'm like, yes, yes, now go against your partner. What, what, what? Oh God, wait, no, I, no, this is not right. My most fondest memory would have to be when I actually saw the first episode of Gundam Wing on Toonami. Is there something you want that's really tough to get a hold of? Maybe it's rare, maybe it's expensive, whatever it is. What is it that you want and why? The one thing I really, really want that I can't afford to get is the entire action figure model collection of Macross. For me, it will probably be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Arcade just itself. It's the Simpsons arcade game that was made by the Konami. I don't care. That game was hot fire. It's like one of the best four players ever. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. For uh, the um, Super Nintendo, I'm just gonna play like through stage one for you, I guess. Basically, you play as a um, mouse that has a jetpack and a sword, and you have to save the princess. Practically like Mario. I mean, see, he he can shoot like a beam with his sword, but. And like Legend of Zelda, you need it like full life to do that. In this game, you don't. And you can just do it anytime you want. Oh, you ready to? Um, basically, the storyline behind this is there's a it, there's a look-alike Sparkster that's like him, but it's a um darker version, right? And he always steals the princess, and it's Sparkster's job to save the princess.
been drawing since I was a baby. Like I was, I don't remember the first drawing I did. I've been drawing all of my life. And when I was in about fourth grade, I started reading newspaper comics, like the funnies. Calvin and Hobbes was my favorite comic strip. Um, the Far Side, Foxtrot, Dennis the Menace, Garfield, all of those were, were things that I started to read every day and really loved and started trying to like draw the characters from those comic strips and, and really, you know, having an appreciation for like the humor of it. And, and I thought, okay, well maybe I'll want to make comic strips when I get older. But the more I tried to write my own comic strips, the more I realized I was not good at to doing like punchlines, like four panels in a comic strip, the last panel's gotta be funny. And I wasn't so good at doing the funny punchline. So um, eventually I started reading like comic book style books, like graphic novels, longer stories, and I felt like that was a better fit for what I wanted to do. So um, the first graphic novel I drew was in 2004, and I've been doing it full time ever since. I'll talk a little bit about drawing because I can't draw to save my life, but that's how I ended up writing because my dream when I was a kid was to be Raina. I mean, I wanted to be able to write and draw my own stories. So, but I can't draw. So, and, and I tried, man. I took art classes. I did all kinds of stuff. I just do not have the skill. I cannot draw at all. So I realized, all right, I guess I'm not going to be a comic book creator then because I can't draw. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to write because at least then I can still tell stories. Um, so that's how I ended up being a writer. But I actually now, I do have a graphic novel coming out next year that I wrote that a woman named Colleen Doran drew. And uh, she's amazing. And it's going to be really, really sweet when it comes out. What anime and manga do you really like? Or what are your favorites? Or if you don't have favorites, that's okay. Too. All right, I guess I'm kind of old school. I really, really liked Ranma. A lot. Okay. GTO, Great Teacher Onizuka, oh. is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, I, really, I really like Yotsuba. Um, that's, that's my favorite right now. And I, but same creator, but Azumanga Daio. What's the craziest thing that has ever happened at a con that you've been at? I was at this con, and uh, this guy comes up to me. I have this huge poster behind me in my booth of the comic book that I did. And this guy comes up to me with his sketchbook. And he's like, oh, you know, I, I want you to, to draw something in my sketchbook. I'm like, I don't draw. I'm not an artist. Like, well, you're sitting here. I want you to draw something. Dude, no, seriously, man. I, I can't draw. And I'm looking through his sketchbook. He's got some nice stuff in there. And I'm like, no, dude, you, trust me. I can't draw. And he's like, he's like, well, what are you doing here then? You're sitting here. You got a comic book. You can, yeah. No, I really, this guy just would not. Find, I said, dude, the only thing I can draw is like a stick figure. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes, then draw a stick figure. Like, he didn't believe me. So I took a whole page in this guy's book, and I drew a stick figure. And it was actually a really lousy stick. It wasn't even a good stick figure. I mean, like, the head was all, like, lopsided. And, like, the legs were two different legs. So that was, that, I don't know if that's the weirdest thing that's happened to me to come, but it's certainly the stupidest thing that's happened to I was at a small press convention once um, where, you know, nobody from the superhero world is there. It's just people that write and draw and publish their own stuff and there was this guy that was at my table and he was looking at my stuff and everybody was like and I was like I don't know who this guy is it was Frank Miller who's <laughs> who's um the you know the guy that did Dark Knight and a host of other really wonderful famous things and I didn't realize it was him but and you know he was looking at my mini comics and that was pretty cool and everybody afterwards was like wow did he buy anything I can't remember Dave did, I don't yeah maybe who knows maybe he bought a babysitter's club I doubt it but <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one of the best conventions that Raina and I both go to is SPX, which is down in Bethesda, Maryland. And, um, you know, one night they, they have a chocolate fondue fountain for everyone. And it's just hard to argue with people when there is chocolate fondue that is free for everyone. It's just kind of like... You know what? I think I'm wrong. And there's like marshmallows to dip in it. <laughs> Music. Hey, someone has you that has pretty decent background music. Oh, the rose petals. Not this one. The Is that a guy? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> don't say anything. Just don't say anything. Silence. Don't say anything. You'll see. Kakoi. <laughs> My name is Rebecca. Gar
Garcia and I'm 20. I go to NYU. I decided to use Anime Club as a way to get teens to talk about perceptions of Japan and what Japan is really like using the anime as a way to explore Japanese culture. Today, I decided to talk about the way homosexuality is presented in anime and manga. And Sailor Moon, there was gay characters and it was not a problem in Japan, but here, like when they brought it over here, it was a problem. Even at that time, there were a lot of gay characters on TV. However, the way they looked at it was, it's a cartoon. And cartoons generally attract a very young public. Mm -hmm. So they don't want the younger viewers to look at it and be like, well, okay, it's okay to be like, okay. But the way that they edited the references to like their homosexuality was not as good as before because they were like all the instances where they would flirt, they still kind of like left in the dialogue. But they would randomly insert, oh, I heard the boyfriend ones, whatever. Or something like that into the yeah, plot. Yeah, they tried to make it innocent, but it, 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 it seemed kind of creepy because it's like, oh, they're cousins, but they're so close. It almost made them seem like kissing cousins uh -huh. to, the, to the American audience. So it didn't work. The Otaku Takeover Week was actually pretty awesome. I mean, everybody got to be a fan and show off what they know. Fandom is really about community at this point. It's about communicating with other people and talking about the stuff you love. I really think that this is the beginning of something and it's going to grow into something really amazing and awesome. Till next year, homies. That's it. Love and peace.